our lives. What's the idea of a king? And I wrote a lot of things, and I'm trying to keep it short and sweet, at least for the soft opening class of today, that it says as follows. The whole idea of a king is to be good with the citizenship. That's the idea of the king. That's why there is a pasuk that says, Berov'am melech velo'am. There is no kingdom without a nation. And there is the, the more unity and harmony exists among the people, that's where the greatness of the king comes. Oh, I'm live. Good morning, everybody. Sorry for the technical delay, but we are already into the dance of today's class. So it says, Berov'am hadrat melech. With the gathering of the masses, that's the beauty of the king. Our hachamim tell us that the fact that we have tomorrow taken out three Sefer Torahs, the Zora Kadosh writes that every time we do Petihat Echal, especially Shabbat and holidays, there is a concept of Shefa. Yesterday we discussed the concept of Shefa, at least in the last class, and we discussed the Benishai explaining how in the world, and it's in the Tefillah there before the Friday night, Kiddush. Can I have the blue Sidur quickly? Thank you so much. Chazau Baruch. So the Ben Ishai explains that Hashem has a distribution system composed of 20 different systems. For example, just to bring an example, Hamavdil, right? You go online, you buy something from Amazon, right? And what happens? How many options they give you when you check out? Okay? Some options are very affordable. Some options are very expensive. But the options are there. Amazon Prime, Locker Pickup, Second Day Delivery, Weekend Delivery, the, uh, 10 Business Days Delivery, etc. So bottom line, there are many different options that we are given. So let's read quickly what the Benish High write on the Friday night Kiddush. And it says that one of the thoughts that a person should have when we make Kiddush on Shabbat night, and it says, Yiratzomi lefanecha, May it be the will of the Almighty, Shiata Etratzon Lefanecha, that this should be considered a moment of goodwill, a moment of acceptance. Because at the end of the day, what is the Kiddush of Shabbat? Kiddush of Shabbat is basically a testimony, right? That we are saying we believe in Hashem, we believe that God created the world in six days, we believe that God rested, we believe in the Torah, and therefore we are mimicking in our limited fashions as humans the essence of God. And what does he say then? Be mashech lanu, and let it be brought down to us, to our wives, to our sons, to our children, to the entire Jewish nation, shefa shalom, an abundance of peace. First blessing that you ask for is peace. Why? Because if you have peace, you have everything. This is what Rashi writes in Perashah Behukotai. Then, Tova, goodness. Who is this referring to? Your wife. The wife. That's what the Gemara says. A man without a wife has no peace, has no blessing has no goodness, has no happiness, has no Torah. Why not? Because none of the above can be revealed to the neshama of the man without the presence of the spouse, especially if the person never got married. And the next one, it comes. Beracha. You have peace, you have a wife, you have a good wife, Be'ezat Hashem, you bring Beracha to your life. Haim, you live. What's the meaning of living? You are alive and you live. There are people who are alive but are dead. God forbid. And there are people that are alive and they live. That's the blessing that we are praying for. That our life should be happy, full of blessing, full of tranquility, hen, charm, hesed, kindness, rahamim, compassion. And here is the distribution system of God. The 22 pipes of distribution, which are open, meaning they're not clocked, and they are merikin, 
has two meanings. You can say it in Hebrew, marak means soup. What's the meaning of soup? Liquid. Okay? Omerikin, spitting out. Yani, sending us tremendous. Shefa, ubracha. Abundance and blessing from where? Mi berecha ha'eliona. From the heavenly pool of Shamaim. So how many, how many pipes distribution system they have? 22 of them. Chafbet, that's what the Benish Hai says. And this is connected to what? To the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Now, we know that there are three times or three areas in life where there is a concept known as etrason, a moment of goodwill. Yani, ask, pardon, ask. Ask, number, time, number one, when a person does the Amida, we know when the person does the Amida, this is our private date with a Kadosh Baruch Hu. That's why we know very well that the Tefillah has four chapters of four divisions. You have from Korbanot, till Hashem Melech, that's chapter one. Then you have Baruch She Amar, till Ishtabah, chapter two. Then you have Yotzer, Shema, up to the Amidah, chapter 3. And then you have the Amidah itself. What is the Amidah? Amidah, it's called, Kabbalistically speaking, Olam Atzilut. What's the meaning of Atzilut? Atzilut basically means next to Hashem. You are standing in front of God. We don't look at the cell phone. We don't walk around. We don't turn around. We praise Hashem. We ask from Hashem. And we express our gratitude to Akadosh Baruch Hu. This is how the Amida is divided. The first three blessings, praising Hashem, Akel, Agadol, Gibor, Ben Nora. From Beracha number four, you have the Ata Honen Le Adam Da'at. You ask for wisdom, because if we have no Sechel, if you have no Rosh, nothing else is relevant. Nothing else is relevant. So you need to have Sechel, you need to have wisdom, Chokha, Bina, Da'at. And once you have a brain, then you can ask for Teshuvah, Refuah, Parnasah. If a person has no Sechel, then there is nothing much that a person can do. And that's the reason why in Mosa'e Shabbat, we do have Dala when we say Atah Honantanu. And where our rabbis in, inserted Atah Honantanu in the Amidah of Mosa'e Shabbat, in the blessing of Atah Honen Le Adam Da'at. Why Dafka? Why specifically in that paragraph of the Amidah, in the blessing for wisdom, we say atahon antanu? Short answer, the Gemara says, in da'at ayn, havdalam ayn. If a person has no brain, how will the person know to differentiate between the holy and the mundane? Even to make havdalah, even to make havdalah, to determine the sanctity of the Shabbat came to an end, and now we welcome the week, the opposite. The Kiddush that we do tonight at home, it's the reverse of Avdalah. Kiddush is sanctifying, receiving the Shabbat. Like a person goes under the chuppah and marries to his wife. That ceremony, part of the ceremony is called Kiddushin. Kiddushin means what? Sanctification, holiness, godliness. So when Shabbat finishes, we make the Avdalah. The other time, that there is a great moment to pray is during Birkat Kohanim. Because at the end of the day, Birkat Kohanim, the three short sentences of Birkat Kohanim, it's all about blessings. All blessings. All blessings from financial blessings, from protection, from charm, from kindness. Hashem's benevolence, and again, the ultimate blessing, the topic of peace. And the third time that there is Eit Ratzon, it's the moment of Petihat Ha'echal, the opening of the ark. And that's why in Rosh Hashanah, they sell the opening of the ark. In the night of Kippur, the opening of the ark. When it comes to a husband that the wife is pregnant, in the ninth month, we honor him to do the opening of the Hechal, why? Because Petihata Echal carries 
a, a, a seeing, so to speak, spiritually, a Kadosh Baruch Hu. So imagine yourself, if every time you do Petihat Echal, there is an Et Ratzon, multiply that times three. That tomorrow we're going to be taking out three Sefers. And Be'ezat Hashem, there are many more things, but I see that the next class is about to begin. I see the nine o'clock crowd is walking into the room. So I'm going to finish with the following statement. Feel free to stay, but I need to switch the channel and the recording. And I need to put my recording voice. Anyways, anyways, bottom line, tomorrow, if you have the merit of Petihata Echal, grab it, buy it. If it's offered for sale, wherever synagogue in the world you are, buy it. But even if you cannot buy it, let's say that they don't sell it, they already gave to someone that the wife is about to give birth. Take advantage of this Shabbat to pray for whatever you need. If it's for, and I have the list, if you have debts, if you owe money, and usually we don't pray for money on Shabbat, but you can say, Bore Olam, take care of all my headaches. If you have issues of Shalom Bayit, if you know someone who needs a refuah shelema, if you are single, pray for all of the above tomorrow. Read Tehillim, learn Torah, pray with the Minyan, which obviously I'm talking to a crowd that is doing this every day. But just in case could be somebody watching or listening in the, in the virtual world that perhaps needs a bit of Hizuk. Why so much power? Because tomorrow HaKadosh Baruch Hu re renews the lease of the world. Even though Rosh Hashanah went and buy, but it's a gift that we have that we can do the renewal. Check your credit score again. So guess what? Since the Pasuk says, Ahodesh Azelachem Rosh Hodashim, this is the beginning of the Jewish calendar. And we have not only that, the Beracha, the first time that a collective blessing was given to the Jewish people was the day of Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Where do we see this from? From Moshe Rabbeinu and Aharon Kohen. Last week's Torah portion, Perashat Shemini, that was on the day of Rosh Chodesh Nisan. The Pasuk says, Aharon et by Barechem. And Aharon Kohen, the Kohen Gadol, Bless the Kahal, lift up his hands. From this Pasuk you learn how Birkat Kohanim needs to be, that the Kohanim lifts the hands and bless them. Ask Rashi, what Biracha did Aharon Kohen gave to the Jewish people? Birkat Kohanim. Yevarechecha Hashem Bishmerecha, financial blessings. Yaer Hashem Panavelecha Vichoneka. All the blessings that are necessary to remove a headache in life are found in this beracha that Aharon Kohen. And then comes the second beracha. Bayabo Moshe Aharon el Ohel Moed, Bayeseu Baybarehu et Aam. Now comes second beracha. All this berachot took place in the day of Rosh Chodesh Nisan. And now comes the Beracha of Moshe and Aharon. The first Beracha was the Beracha of Aharon Kohen. The second Beracha, we welcome Moshe Rabbeinu Alav Shalom and ask Rashi and ask, what Beracha did they give? It says the very famous Beracha, chapter 90 of Tehillim, the last Pasuk. Bihinoam Hashem Elokeinu Alenu, the very famous Pasuk, that we say, in which basically Rashi explains the meaning of this beracha, irason shetishre shechina bemaase yedechem. May it be the will of the Almighty that whatever you do should be successful. Who doesn't need that blessing? By the way, I'm willing to start taking bits for the petiha tomorrow. And if you're not around, I can be your shaliyah. 
Okay? I'm, I'm throwing you this freebie. You know, free insider's market. So, we're going to do the following. I'm going to conclude with a statement. Pause the recordings so we can restart the new recording uh, for the second part of the class. So, bottom line, take advantage of this Shabbat. Open your heart to Hashem. It's the moment that we get an opportunity that whatever may have been determined in Rosh Hashanah, now we can get an upgraded version. And by Ezat Hashem, this Berach of the month of Nisan will be crowned with the ultimate blessing, the redemption of Am Israel, as the Gemara writes, Benisan Igalu u Benisan Atidim Leigael. Like the first redemption took place in Rosh Chodesh Nisan, Be'ezat Hashem will have the Zechut of the ultimate redemption happening in the month of Nisan that is about to start in a few hours. So for the earlier class, you're welcome to stay. Otherwise, Shabbat Shalom Meborach, Chodesh Tov Besiman Tov. We're going to say quickly the Bi Hananiah to say Kaddish, and then we begin right away with the uh, next class. Baruch Adonai